We are now joined by former Marshall and Shepherd women's basketball player Abby Beeman. Abby is now going to be play per, playing professionally in Iceland. Uh, Abby, thank you for joining us on the show. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be on. So, Abby, I guess we'll just start with the uh, kind of obvious first question. How did this come about, and, and um, what was your process like of deciding where you wanted to play professionally? Yeah, so long story short, I you know, first started by picking an agent, and one of my assistant coaches from this past year helped me with that because she played for the same agency that I'm working with so she kind of helped me uh, lead me in the right direction that, in that aspect and then from there it was just finding the right team and the right fit for me um, like I said in other interviews I, I had some options but um, turned a few of them down just in hopes that you know I'd find a better fit for me so it was definitely some risk involved but I finally landed on Iceland and, I, and I'm really happy about it and really excited for the opportunity. Hey, Abby, it's Dylan. Obviously, there, I'm sure there's a lot of factors that went into this, but when you were making your decision, was it more so about the basketball fit, the, the team fit, uh, or did you kind of take into consider consideration the location more so? Um, it was all of it, all the above combined. Of course, um, I'm going overseas to play basketball, not to just travel, even though that's an added bonus. So I definitely wanted to find the right fit on the court. And then also somewhere where I knew I could be happy off the court as well, because if I go over there and, and I just want to come right back, uh, that won't be really, really a good thing for me. So I wanted to kind of find a balance between both. But I think first and foremost, it was finding the right basketball fit. Abby, you make the jump now to professional basketball. You've already made the jump from Division Two while you were at Shepherd to now Division One for a few years at Marshall. What do you think this jump's going to be like for you getting ready to play in Iceland, and how much do you think the jump that you made from Shepherd to Marshall will help you kind of in that same mindset? I definitely think the jump from Shepherd to Marshall helped me grow tremendously and both on the court and off the court I was a little further from home so kind of got me ready for this and then also of course just playing the talent that I got to play has helped a lot but you know I think the jump it's another big jump from division one to playing professional I'm going to be playing against girls who are a lot more older than me and more physical so I definitely have to be prepared for anything that's thrown at me but um, I'm hoping to kind of once I get settled just kind of do what I've always done and find a way that I can help the team and, and help win games. Abby, what can you tell us about uh, Hammer Thor, the team that you'll be playing on? Um, they're, they're a really good team. They're going into kind of a different league this year, but last year they had two girls that um, are now coming over to the United States to play Division One basketball this year. So there's plenty of talent on the team. Um, they, they're American. They had last year was player of the year. I think she averaged like 23 points a game. So I definitely have some big shoes to fill, but um, it's a it's a loaded roster, and some girls from Europe will be on it, and then I'll be the only American combined with a bunch of girls from Iceland. So it's a good combination of a lot of uh, different people, but I think the talent level is going to challenge me, and I think um, it'll be great to experience a different culture and, and grow some new relationships. Obviously, you have some teammates that have, that have professional experience overseas. I know Sydney Clayton, your former teammate at Shepherd, has been playing over in the Netherlands and now in Germany. And uh, have you talked to her or any other teammates that have uh, of yours in the past that are now or have been playing professionally? Uh, have you reached out to them at all uh, for you know any advice or tips uh, on playing professionally and playing overseas? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I'd be silly not to at least. Because um, it's kind of very new to me, so um, why not reach out to people that I know that have firsthand experience? So I have had a few teammates that are, that have gone on to play, and then, of course, I've actually had two coaches as well, so that helped. And then you mentioned Sydney Clayton, so yeah, she was like one of the first people I reached out to, um, and she was able to give me some good advice and and some stuff you don't really think about. She was able to provide that information for me. So thankful for all those relationships, and that you know I have the ability to reach out to some people who have experience. Abby, I know this might sound like a dumb question, but have you been outside the country before? That's not a dumb question, and the answer is no. So, brand new for me. I had to get a passport and everything, so. All right, so with this being the uh, first time for you leaving the country, and it'll be something that 
obviously it, it's not a vacation. It's going to be for uh, however long the contract is with the team. So what are you, I guess, excited about and maybe even nervous about to keep it real? Yeah, so um, there's plenty of things to be excited about. And then there's also the other side of it where there are some nerves and, and some unknowns there. But um, I think Dylan knows. Um, I'm very picky with food, so that's something I'm kind of I've been stressing about a little bit. But uh, I'm sure I'll find something I like. And then, of course, just being away from family. Um, it's hard for me. I love my family. Um, do anything for them. I have a bunch of little kids in my life that you know I'm going to miss out on some things. But at the end of the day, uh, not very many people get to do this. Not very many people get to travel for their job and to play in a different country doing the thing that they love. So um, I definitely try to look at the positive in each day and the positive of what I get to go and do and not, not so much what I don't get to have. So I'm um, just kind of keeping that mindset will help me grow and, and get through it. And I think I'll really enjoy my time there. Abby, since you brought it up, we got to ask, did you try any burgers at Marshall? Did you go to Fat Patties? <laughs> No, I didn't. I did not. I just stick the wings there. So I didn't try any burgers. Um, but from a basketball perspective, I wanted to just ask about, I guess, your, your final season with the Thundering Herd. Obviously, a historic year for the team and, and for yourself as well, being Sunbelt Player of the Year, uh, making it to the NCAA tournament. Just um, what was your, your biggest takeaways and memories that you have from that past season uh, with Marshall? Oh, gosh. I mean, I don't think I could have scripted it any better to end my college career. Um, I, it's just the fact that we started out not so good and were able to turn it around like that. I don't think anyone saw that coming, including some people on our team. But um, I've, I've grown so much this past year, um, this past two years, honestly. Um, but with Coach Kim, just, I feel like she just pushed me to another level and kind of unlocked you know, something I didn't know that I had. And then as well as the whole team she just brought out success in us and we were able to kind of get the job done that was my first ever team championship and for it to come on my last year um it's just really you know, kind of a storybook ending for me and to be player of the year um i really couldn't have asked for anything more and i'm so thankful for my experience i i want to follow up on, on that about coach caldwell uh how and your experience with her coming in uh from glenville state and coming into Marshall, and now moving on to Tennessee as their as their head coach. What sort of things did Coach Caldwell bring to the program to sort of improve the team, improve your game as well? And then just how it feels to see that she's gotten this job at Tennessee now, and the legacy there. Pat, you know, obviously the legacy of the the Lady Vols and Pat Summit, and uh, how you feel about when you saw that news. And the fact that, you know, two years ago you were playing against her team in the D2 NCAA tournament and you guys went to D1 and now she's at Tennessee and you're moving on to professional basketball. Yeah, isn't it crazy how all that works? Um, I never thought I'd play for her. And then I never, I mean, I knew she's a great coach, but I didn't know that her success would come so early with the Tennessee job. But, you know, they 100%. Um, got the right coach for them, and, and I'm so happy for her to have that opportunity. And she's just—it's it, hard to ex explain to people, to explain to people about her unless you're really in it with her. She just has a way of kind of motivating the team, and and she's going to push you super hard, probably to limits you've never been pushed before. But you know, at the end of the day, it's all coming from love and coming from a place of you're going to thank her for it later because you know she produces so many championships. So. To spend my last year with her and to be coached by by her is truly something that um, I'm thankful for and I don't take for granted. But now to just like have her as a fan of mine and, and to be able to reach out to her, you know, whenever I whenever I want and, and know she's going to answer and give me some advice is, is another cool person to have in my life. So super thankful for this past year. Um, she certainly helped make it all happen. Um, but you know, we came in every day and just bought in, and and she um, definitely delivered with the fact that we did win the championship. Did you ever talk to Coach Caldwell about that game, the Shepard glenville State game in the tournament? Because I still contend that no one gave the national champion Glenville State uh, team a better run in that whole tournament than Abby Beeman and the Shepard Rams. <laughs> you all should have won that game, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah, I second that. I think about that game still. I do, at least. And then, uh, But we, I think we brought it up before. We definitely brought up 
you know, the Gl- her at Glenville, me at Shepard. Uh, I think we talked about the game once, but I don't really love to talk about that game because it wasn't my best game. Uh, but, yeah, we, we definitely reminisce on the Division two days and how cool it was to have me, um, her, and then, of course, Bree on the team this year and just for people to recognize that there's so much talent at the Division two level, both players and coaches. So uh, we definitely don't forget our roots and where we come from, and we just always kind of like to give that praise to the Division two level. We're joined by Abby Beeman, former women's basketball star at Marshall and Shepard. And Abby, circling back now to the decision to uh, continue your career professionally in Iceland. I know you uh, mentioned earlier that the team Hammer Thor that you will be joining is getting ready to become a part of a uh, new league. Um, As best as you can, I guess, just explain what you know about the league and when the season starts and maybe how people back here at home could uh, follow along when it does begin. Yeah, so um, actually, I'm still working on, on how the streaming works. I know there is streaming, but I don't have exactly the details on that yet, but I plan to share them when I get them. And then, just as far as the league goes, um, it's mainly obviously based in Iceland, considering the country is pretty isolated from the rest of Europe, but um, it's a really competitive league. They're in the first league, which is the highest league you can play in in Europe. And that was one of my goals is to get into that league and just um, challenge myself and not, um, I don't leave any regrets in that area. But uh, yeah, like I said, the league's challenging, at least for our coach and our team. They like to shoot threes, a mid-range driving kick. So he likes to play fast and transition whenever the opportunity is there. So I assume he likes to play that way because it matches well with what the league does. So um, that's kind of the information I have for you there. I'm still doing more on digging up information and talking to the coach. But, yeah, it's going to be a competitive league, and it's going to challenge me in ways that you know, I've probably never been challenged. And, Abby, uh, for you as well and, and just the sport of women's basketball, you were a part of probably the most watched women's basketball NCAA tournament uh, with everything with Caitlin Clark and all that stuff just – uh, talk about, I guess, the, the popularity of the game and the sport and how it's growing. And also in Europe, I know that it's always been a little bit more popular than it has been in the States. And I know a lot of um, even WNBA players were playing uh, in, in foreign countries as well during the off season. So uh, just, I guess, the popularity of the game in Europe and, and how it's grown recently in the United States and how that impacts you. Yeah, how cool is it that, you know, women's basketball is in a place right now where home is probably the most popular it's ever been so um, I feel blessed to be a part of that and um, it's really cool to just see all these athletes kind of reap benefits that they never have before but you know like you said the top leagues in Europe um, girls from the WNBA are playing over there too so it's possible to run into them like one day hopefully I can keep growing and keep getting into better leagues but um, it, it's just super cool to see where the game's at and I think it's been a long time coming and especially to be able to like, experience March Madness this year though it didn't go the way we wanted to the atmosphere there was just insane um I've been to men's games before and and that matched every bit of it if not more so I'm grateful to be a part of it and I hope there's only better things to come and that it just continues to grow not just here but worldwide